Somber Teacup Chronicles presents Arcane Academia. Afternoon, students, and welcome back. I'm thankful that all of you are keeping yourselves healthy. I know that this class can be very taxing on the mind. Today, we will be talking about another plant. This plant may sound familiar to many of you. It is unfortunate that TAR and the university have not been able to prevent this plant from spreading throughout this campus and most of the nation. The black-eyed poppy is not a very unique plant in itself. The black-eyed poppy, however, in its refined form, is significantly more addictive than most of the drugs manufactured here on Earth and it is significantly more dangerous than many of the drugs we've produced that were intended to kill people. As you know, there was a cult that took part in the recreational use of the black-eyed poppy. The effects were not what they hoped for, but significantly spread their influence. I have a case file of someone who first-handedly have seen the effects of the plant and one of the many rituals that the children of the poppy cult participates in. The events in this case file take place on one of the children of the poppy's compounds in a university in California. Erica Miller's case file reads as stated. I was excited to begin my first year as a freshman at the University of Berkeley in California. I was moving away from my home and family to explore a bit on my own. It was a terrifying thought, but I was not going to be alone. My best friend Sarah was going to be at the same school as me, and we were both super excited to move in. I was afraid for a while that we weren't going to be able to be roommates, but she surprised me on move-in day when I saw that she had already moved into our room. I was happy to see a familiar face. We were excited and began looking up exciting places to go to before school began. There was a knock, and then a paper slid under our door. I looked over to Sarah, and then I walked over to the door. There was another knock, and I received another piece of paper under the door. I opened the door to see if our RA was there, delivering the papers. But when I opened it, I saw no one in the hall. I looked at the papers, confused. Sarah grabbed them from my hands and crumbled them up. She told me that it was some sort of stupid recruiting tactic for a club that was on campus. She told me that she was getting one of those papers under her door four times a day since she came here. I looked at the garbage and saw that she was not joking. There were 12 pieces of the same paper in the garbage can with some plastic wrap and cleaning wipes. I was concerned and asked if she had talked to anyone. She said that she did, but she also mentioned that everyone else was getting the same flyers too. I met up with a couple of Sarah's friends, and we all went out for pizza. We had a great time when we went out. I really wanted to get to know a lot of her friends that she had already made. We were paying for the check when we saw a group of people walk past. Their clothes were identical to each other. They were all wearing long clothing that made me think of what hippies wore during the 60s. The men and women all had long, dirty hair and were wearing sandals, flowers, beads, and a necklace with a yellow flower. Sarah and her friends began to whisper to each other as the group walked past the pizzeria. I felt a shiver as one of the members turned their head and looked at me. I felt a chill down my spine as I watched them disappear. Sarah tapped me on the shoulder and I nearly jumped out of my skin. I looked back and saw that Sarah was looking a bit pale and I could tell that she saw the same thing I did. That the members had very lifeless eyes. We decided that we would leave as a group because it was getting pretty late. I felt someone watching us and I constantly looked over my shoulder. We were escorted home by some of the boys in our group. I could tell they were a little freaked out and didn't want to walk home alone either. We let them stay at our place until we had campus security pick them up. There was a knock at our front door and we saw two men dressed in black body armor carrying small strange weapons that glowed orange in the dark. Tar was on the front
front of their vest, they offered to take the boys home with them to their dorm. They were very thankful and accepted the well-armored company. We did not see much of the strangely dressed group for a while until posters began to show up a couple days before school started. This time, they were not being delivered to the dorms, they were being delivered in person. There were several public areas where there would be people with megaphones trying their best to grab people's attention. If you ignored the people handing out the flyers, they would only shout louder in order to get your attention. The groups of these hippie-dressed people would often get physical with the people who ignored them. They would claw at people's clothing as they passed. We stayed far away from them, and the group did not like that. They would shout at us and point at us. Some of the girls in the group began to walk towards us as fast as they could to try and hand us the papers that they were holding. What I found very scary is how fast they could change from shouting at people with a blank expression to screeching in a horrible, shrill voice as their face would contort with inhuman motion. One of the woman's mouths was opened so wide her jaw was dislocated, and her friend had to force it back into place. After that, they just continued to try and distribute the flyers as best as they could. I don't know if anyone ever took one. I never stood around long enough to see. A couple days before school started was when we began to see even larger posters telling students to come see The Miracle. There was a large yellow flower on this poster. The flower had black circles, one on each of the flower petals. The event was going to happen at 12 a.m. tonight. I tried to talk to the staff and some of the upperclassmen, but they just looked at me nervously and walked away. I messaged one of Sarah's friends, who was an upperclassman, about the event. They just told me not to be anywhere near the building when it happens. The curiosity began to boil inside me at that point, and I really wanted to know what the event was. Some of the children of the Poppy members walked up to me. There was a girl with dark brown straight hair wearing a flower crown. She dug her nails into my arm as I tried to walk away. I yelped in pain as I felt her sharp nails dig into my skin. She kept asking for my name as her friend slowly approached me. I told her to let go. She just looked at me blankly and asked my name again. I shoved her and this caused her to lose her grip for a moment and I was able to slip my arm out of her grasp. I pulled out a can of my pepper spray and sprayed her in the face. The girl shouted at me in pain and frantically tried to grab me again. Her scream sounded a mix of angry and primal. I began to run away from them as other members began to help the one that just attacked me. When I was far enough away from them, I looked at my arm and saw that I was bleeding. I went back to my room and began to wipe away the blood and change my shirt. Sarah looked at me stunned and asked what had happened and asked if I had an accident. I told her what happened and she was fuming mad. She helped me clean up my arm and bandage it. She said that she wanted to get even with the annoying club that was terrorizing her and all of her friends. She said that her and her friends had a plan to ruin their little evening. I was afraid of them, but I was also ready to get even with them for the girl who tore up my arm. Later that night, I met with Sarah, her friends, and some other angry freshmen. We met in the back of the Children of the Poppies communal area where they would be having their event. Our small group huddled close together to avoid being seen. Sarah asked one of the boys to keep an eye on the club through one of the small windows of the building. The children of the poppy were meeting in a small building. Most of it was made out of solid stone and looked like a castle. I constantly looked back at the boys watching through the window, feeling paranoid. Sarah handed me a large string of firecrackers. The boy looking through the window motioned us to him as he pried it open with a flathead screwdriver. I stood up on the crate that we had pulled over to the window and looked inside. I would sorely regret that decision as we saw the beginning of the ceremony. All of the members inside were humming a strange tune, 
We're all standing up, looking at a strange, long-haired woman or a dress that had large designs of the yellow poppy flower. There were several yellow poppy flowers that were behind her as decoration. The strange woman was very thin and had white markings around her eyes. She reached out to greet the children and smiled with a rotten yellow smile. And some of the members appeared with some people with bags over their heads and their arms tied behind their backs. They forced the captives to kneel in front of their leader. They took the bags off of their heads and I could see that their faces were bruised and that they had been gagged. The strange woman began to smile at her new subjects and pulled out a strange fluid from the altar that looked like lemonade. A yellow poppy was sitting on the surface of the pitcher. The woman began to go into an insane speech about the great unification and how it was a sign from their god to begin the cleansing. She called herself the shepherd that would lead us all into a beautiful unification where there would be no suffering, no war, no hunger, no disease. The crowd cheered as we watched in horror as she would de-gag the captives and force the yellow liquid down their throats. We could do nothing as the captives screamed for help and mercy as they were forced to drink it. I could see their eyes going blank and their face losing expression as they fell to the floor. The woman then turned to her remaining captives and began to chant. Sarah was angry and terrified. One of the boys in our group began to light our firecrackers and said that we have to help them escape somehow. We tossed the firecrackers into the room and the air was filled with many flashes that would blind them. The flashes caused the children of the poppy to scream in surprise and anger. The captives stood up and began to run out the front door as the cultists began to scream as they clutched their ears in pain. We got off the crate and began to run. We ran by quickly as we heard the front door opening. I looked back and saw a small group of people looking at us. We began to run and the group following us began to walk faster. They hummed louder and louder until they started to screech like animals. Two other smaller groups came out of the shadows and began to chase us. I could feel my heart pounding in my ears as I ran faster. I cried for help as my lungs began to burn. Suddenly, there were several black vans that drove onto the sidewalk of the campus and slammed through the barricades. Men dressed in all black jumped out of the vans. They trained their guns on the crowd that were chasing us. The crowd shrieked and continued to run towards the men dressed in all black body armor. I turned around and watched as two men got attacked. Soon after that, the rest of the platoon began to fire on the crowd. I covered my ears and watched as they began to fall to the ground dead. The men in the body armor forced us into the van and drove away from the cultists. I shivered in the back seat from shock. Sarah held me in her arms, trying to calm me down. I asked the men where they were taking us. They looked at us, but did not speak. We drove for a while until we stopped at an open clearing. They escorted us out. I was afraid that they were going to kill us, but they never raised their weapons at us. I heard a strange voice from behind me. I turned around and saw an old man with a cane walking towards us with a sympathetic smile on his face. He introduced himself as Sullivan. He said that what we did was dangerous, but very brave. He said that he was the head of a special department in a university that specialized in the unusual and the dangerous creatures of this changing world. He then explained that the children of the poppy were very dangerous and said that we would not be able to stay safe at our college. I cried along with a lot of our friends. We had worked so hard to get here only to go into hiding. The head director then placed a hand on my shoulder and said that there were two options for us. The first one is to transfer to another school, in the north somewhere where the poppy doesn't grow. 
or they can enroll in his school and they can learn to fight the monsters that hide under our beds. That was when I decided to enroll in my new school the next day. I began my first semester at Arcane University that fall with everyone else that was with us that night. Here come Miller's statement ends here. The children of a poppy are responsible for many disappearances of children all over the United States. However, they are hard to track because someone has been covering their tracks. Those that are unlucky enough to drink the essence of the poppy go through a terrifying transformation that is very stomach churning. Since I just had lunch not too long ago, I will not discuss it in class. We contacted Erica to check up on her after I received this statement. She now works for Tar, I guess as a thank you for saving her life that fateful day. She is very dedicated in helping us with Project Gardner. We are hoping to stop the further spread of the flower and its hold on the youth that it has already corrupted. We are using some of the artifacts that we uncovered during the rupture's opening. And we have begun testing for a solution for this growing problem. Again, it is hard to track the cult's movement because a third party is covering their tracks to prevent us from finding them. I am currently waiting on the news of... Oh, uh, hey, can this wait? I kind of have a lecture going on right now. Look, I appreciate that you're sending me these letters and everything, but can you please just tell me who they're from? I'm too busy to be distracted from their cryptic writing. Hey, don't just... Sorry, uh, class is dismissed. This is going to need my immediate attention.